Hello, my name is Ralph Northam. I'm the Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia, and I'm running to become the 73rd Governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia. You've seen how, how hard it's been for Chair McAuliffe to get anything done with the Republicans. Yes. Can you do it? You know, I am going to do it, and that's one of the reasons why I want to be governor is because I, I have been in the state legislature now for 10 years, six years in the Senate, and then the privilege of presiding over the Senate for four years as, as lieutenant governor. And, and as I said from the uh, dais the other, uh, other night, it's just been a tremendous privilege uh, to serve Virginia, but also to get to know each senator and their families. And, and I do consider them friends. I, I think we agree that we can disagree. But at the end of the day, we, you know, we're there to do what's in the best interest of Virginia. And uh, as you remember, uh, several years ago, you know, I passed the smoking ban in restaurants and I took on the tobacco industry, which, as you know, has a tremendous amount of influence in Virginia. And I did that by working with both sides of the aisle. And so, you know, I realize that I don't have a monopoly on ideas. I do feel very strongly about my values and principles. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm open minded and I, I enjoy listening to other people's agendas and, and again, discussing these issues and, and doing what's in the best interest of Virginia. There's a little bit of soul searching in both, within both parties. Yeah. And I'm wondering what you, um, obviously Hillary Clinton won right. in, in Virginia, both the primary very handily and, um, and the general election. Yes. And yet there are still some people within the Democratic Party who feel that we, feel some angst and, and feel like things need to be shaken up. How do you yes. speak to those people? You know, I think people in Virginia, Laura, at least when I travel around, are, are looking for two things in a, in a leader. Uh, the first is uh, they're very concerned about what's going on in Washington right now, uh, especially with health care, uh, especially with some of the attacks on the LGBT community, on immigrants, on women's access to reproductive health care on the environment, especially the Chesapeake Bay. So they want to know that there's someone that will stand up and fight uh, for Virginia and fight against what's going on in, in Washington and making sure that that doesn't uh, affect what we're doing here in Virginia. So that's, that's one thing that we deal with as we go around and listen to folks. You know, the other thing that people want is they want a job that they can support themselves with and their families. They want to know that their families have access to affordable and quality health care. And they want to know that they're uh, children have access to a world-class education and want to live in safe communities. They don't want guns on every street corner in Virginia. So, so they want someone who has led in Virginia that knows how to get things done. The smoking ban in the restaurants is a good example of that. And it really can take Virginia to the next level. Now guns, you, you mentioned yes. guns. That's a tough issue to yes. get compromise on. But where, where do you think, how do you think you can uh, yeah. do that with, with Republicans? I think, you know, one of the things I've been able to do over the years, Laura, is find things that we can agree on. And so for in that particular issue, uh, guns, it is very difficult in Virginia. People feel very strongly about the Second Amendment, uh, their rights. Um, and so if we can find, uh, agree, on, for example, that we should have responsible uh, gun ownership. Just like we have responsible use of automobiles. Uh, nobody wants someone getting behind the wheel that shouldn't be there. And the same is true with guns. Nobody wants someone having access to a gun that one isn't trained or perhaps has you know, mental issues or, or other things, domestic violence or a lot of issues uh, that, uh, that people, those people shouldn't have access to guns. So if we can find something that we can agree on, and then go from there. That's the way that I like to do things. And as you know, I have an interesting perspective on guns. I grew up on the Eastern Shore, a very rural area. I grew up hunting and fishing, uh, as did my family. But then I served in the military. I took care of wounded soldiers during Desert Storm who were on the receiving end of assault weapons. And I have seen what those do to human beings. And, and there's just no excuse that uh, we have those, in my mind, uh, on our streets and in our society. I also, as a pediatric neurologist, have held two and three year old toddlers in my arms and, and I've had to tell their parents that their children aren't going to live because they have picked up a loaded weapon on a bedside table, for example, and either shot themselves or shot their siblings. Um, you know, we have smart gun technology now. It's 2017. I would say, what are we waiting for? We can agree to disagree, but at the end of the day, I like to build consensus and again, do what's in the best interest of Virginia. Under uh, President Trump, of course, yes. he's talked about laying off federal workers. He's yes. talked about military buildup, but also um, there, yes. there could be other cuts. How, how do you think you'd address 
that? Well, starting with, with health care, Laura, um, you know, we have been very frugal in Virginia with our Medicaid spending. Uh, politically, uh, we chose not to expand Medicaid. It's something that I, I fought to expand Medicaid uh, since 2014, and we haven't been able to, done, to get it done. We've done a lot of what we call managed care Medicaid. So, so we're 47th in the country now on what we spend in Medicaid. So if in Washington they do what we call a block grant, Virginia is very vulnerable. Uh, and we need to take care of those that are uh, less fortunate th than us. And what better person to have at the table than someone who understands health care and who is a physician. So health care is important. The environment is very important. As you know, I have been an advocate for restoring the health of the Chesapeake Bay since I've been in Richmond. We've made a lot of good progress. Now President Trump wants to take $73 million away from what we've been using to restore the health of the Chesapeake Bay. So to answer your question, we're going to have to be in a position in Virginia where we watch carefully what's going on in Washington and then we're able to make modifications and at the end of the day we're probably going to need to do more with less and and again that's why we need people uh, who are making policy that understand what's going on in Virginia that have been there and that know how to get things done. No, I know you've supported Medicaid expansion yes. all the, all this time. Do you do you realistically is that something you'd, you'd continue to push for and you think it's realistic? I do, Laura. And, you know, I, I think that uh, even some of my Republican friends uh, that I talk to realize uh, that the Affordable Care Act is, is going to be here to stay for at least a while. So from a business perspective, I, I remind people, Laura, and you've probably heard me say this before, but any business person, which I am, I own our medical practice, I'm a part owner, any business person that would want to give their competitors $5 million a day, I would tell them as a neurologist they ought to have their head examined. So, so that's kind of where we are. And from a moral perspective, we have 400,000 working, and I usually underline the word working, Virginians who don't have access to health care uh, coverage right now. And so that's part of what Medicaid expansion is designed for, to give them access. And when people don't have access to go see a provider, they can just be one uh, medical illness away from financial ruin. Obviously, you weren't expecting uh, a, a real primary fight, yeah. and um, I'm wondering what uh, what you make of that. Where, where, why does someone think there's an opening? Um, you know, we were focused on the the general election uh, on November the seventh, and and then Tom entered the race in in early January, and you know we talked uh, when he called me, and we're going to be positive about this. I think this will give. Uh, Virginians an opportunity to know me a little bit better, obviously know him. Uh, it will help with our name recognition, which is very important uh, in the general election. Um, and so we're going to be positive about this. Um, there are good things about primaries. As, you know, sometimes it puts people in awkward positions. But, but I think that there is so much energy and so much enthusiasm across Virginia right now because of the campaign that we watched in 2016. Um, and so people are coming up wherever we go around the Commonwealth saying, you know, what can I do to get involved? How can I help? What we watched in 2016, we're not going to accept that as the new normal. So I think whoever gets out of the primary, and we're confident that we will uh, come out positively, will be in a very good position uh, to run in the general election in November. And the other thing that I like to emphasize to people across the Commonwealth, this is not only important for the governor's race, the attorney general and lieutenant governor's race, but with this energy, we have a great opportunity this year to pick up a lot of delegate seats. And so, you know, when we go back and talk about the principles and values that are important to us, it's certainly a lot easier when you can play offense and not have to play so much defense when you can become proactive rather than reactive. So we look forward to 2017 being a good year for the Democratic Party. Corey Stewart clearly running as a um, Trump right. mini-me uh, and Ed Gillespie's trying to walk a more sure. a narrow line on uh -huh. that. Uh, at least so far, if you believe polls, and maybe you don't, uh, the, the Trump message hasn't, d doesn't seem to be resonating that, that mm -hmm. much. He's, Gillespie seems to be far right. ahead. Do you, um, uh, do you find that surprising at all? I mean, I know you weren't a Trump supporter right. clearly oh, but he did correct. win he did win the <laughs> primary yeah. uh here in virginia uh -huh. um do, do you um do, do you wonder about that or do you wonder that it ever had any appeal 
I think he touched, uh, you know, people across the country when, when he said he was going to make America great again and get their jobs back. And, and I really think that the more you watch, they, people across this country were sold a bill of goods. And, and a lot of the things that he talked about, uh, I think he had difficulty telling the truth on some of them, which is unfortunate. And I think there are a lot of things that he said that he just can't, uh, he can't uh, deliver on. And so his, you know, his popularity rating is continuing to decline. The last I saw was, I think, 37 or 38 percent. So, so there are some, I suspect, uh, Americans and, and Virginians, in, in our case, that are still on board with him, obviously. But uh, I think the majority are, are wondering, you know, what, what did, who did we vote for and, and was that the right thing to do? And, and we're seeing a lot of voters' remorse out there. And again, that's why there's so much energy that we see in enthusiasm, especially in our party. You know, sometimes after a presidential election, there's complacency and people don't vote the year after. But I think you're going to see a different story in November this year. There was a lot of attention paid, uh, I don't know, a few weeks back when you uh, mentioned that you had voted for yeah. George W. Bush. So yeah. what, um, can you talk about why you supported him and also what you make of the fact that people were so uh, surprised by that? Yeah, you know, a New York Times reporter asked me that uh, in, a, in an interview. And, you know, my response to him uh, was that I did vote for, for Bush. Uh, and I explained to him that, you know, back in those years, I was starting my medical practice. I was doing a lot of work with our, our pediatric hospice. And, and I was underinformed politically. I didn't pay that much attention. I, I always knew it was a good idea to vote, and I encourage everybody to vote. Obviously, knowing what I know now, uh, it was the wrong vote. Uh, he doesn't really, he didn't and doesn't stand for the values and principles that I do. And, and since I've been in public service for the last 10 years, I've been unwavering uh, on the issues to include access to women's reproductive health care and, and, you know, the responsible gun ownership and environmental issues such as I've always uh, argued against offshore drilling. And so I haven't wavered. And I think people will realize that it's not that important who I voted for 17 years ago. It's what I've stood for and what I've accomplished since I've been in public service. And, and the last thing I would say about that, Laura, um, I went to VMI. I was the president of the Honor Court. Honor is probably the most important thing to me. And when that journalist asked me that question, I could have danced around the issue. Uh, nobody knew who I voted for in that uh, polling booth, or I could have not told the truth. But I chose to, 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 to excuse me, to tell the truth. And I think people should understand that our leaders need to be honest with people, and, and that's the kind of leader that I've always been, and that I will continue to be as the, the next governor in Virginia. Uh, what What is your guilty pleasure? You know, I don't know if I'd have any say I have any guilty pleasures, but um, you know, having grown up on the Eastern Shore. Uh, anything that I can do on the water, uh, I love, and especially fishing. And uh, I, I used to do a lot of offshore fishing, and I, I miss that. Uh, uh, I'm also very uh, active physically, so I, I like to run. I like to ride my bike, and um, you know, just spend time with my my family and my wife. Back when you were a boy, what what did you see yourself um, being when you grew up? What did you want to be when you grew up? Yeah, you know, I, anything that was fast, I, I liked on the Eastern Shore, whether it was boats. I mean, we used to race boats. My brother and I had a stock car, a, a race car in high school. Um, so I'd always wanted to fly jets. And so when I went to VMI uh, out in Lexington, I was in the Navy ROTC and, and uh, signed up to fly F-18s. And uh, after about a year, they decided to give me a vision test, which was a good idea. Um, and said that, you know, Northern, you're not going, you can't see 10 feet in front of the cockpit, so you're not going to be flying F-18s. And, and so I became a biology major, went to medical school, and, and because the Army had a little bit different path uh, to doing your training and then giving back as part of your commitment, I switched to the Army. So uh, here I was, I, I grew up on the water, I loved the water, I was going to be in the Navy, and then I, I ended up in foxholes. <laughs>